so let's do Modi's method. So we have the initial basic feasible solution for this. We've done that using the northwest corner method. Let's do the first iteration of Modi's method. So let's find the next tableau or the next you know, set of decision variables. So with Modi's method, the first thing that we have to do is find the row and the column values using the cost coefficients and an assumption of one of our row and column values. And in this course, we always choose R1 is equal to zero. So just a reminder about the formula that we're using here, it's Cij is equal to Ri plus Kj, and that is, you know, your i is your row number, which is one and two, and the j is your column number, which is one, two, three, four, and five. And when we're working out our row and our columns, we just make, you know, R the subject of the formula, so we have Ri is equal to Cij minus our Kj, or we can make, you know, our Kj the subject of the formula, and Kj is equal to Cij minus our Ri. And we'll use this to determine our row and column numbers for all the non-empty cells. So it's going to be connected to our basic variables, and our basic variables are, you know, the ones that have values in this table sitting here. So it's the non-empty cells in the table. So we only look at those to find our row and our column values. So let's go ahead and do it. And I'm not going to write down every single equation. I'm just going to point exactly where it is so you can get the hang of it so you have less writing to do when you're practicing. So you obviously have to start off with whichever one has two knowns. So of course, you only can solve for one unknown, right? So in this case, we have 24 minus 0, and that's going to give us our K1. The 24 is our K1, and we use it utilizing this formula, the cost coefficient minus the row number, and we, because we say the row number, we kind of always have the situation of this very first block is going to give us, you know, a column value. Then we move on from there, and again, we can't go here because it's an empty cell, so we go to the next non-empty cell, or whichever one has, you know, only one unknown in it. So you could have gone, you know, like here, and you would have 18, but you don't have a row number yet, and you don't have a column number yet. So obviously you can't do this one yet. Same with this one here, you can't do it yet. Same with this one, you can't do it yet. But you can do, you know, this, for this one here, you can do K3, you, can, you have a five, you have a zero, so you can work out K3. And I'm specifically not doing it in order to, you know, make a point. And now, you can do these ones because you have one unknown and you have you know uh, well you can do the r you can find the r and then you can eventually get to those okay so let's go to this one here 24 minus zero and that's going to give us k2 and once again we now can work out the row number because we have this one so we have k3 is equal to five now we can use it with this 20 to find the row number and we'll just use this formula over here so we have 20 minus 5 that's going to give us 15 and now that we have the row number we can work out the column numbers for those so you're going to have to be careful and just make sure when you go through this process you will have to obviously always do the one where you have two knowns and move on from there right so now we have 2 minus 15 that's going to give us k the fourth k is equal to minus 13 and then we have the fifth one is equal to three okay so now we worked out all our rows and columns utilizing this formula for our non-empty cells next up is we work out our differences so our differences are actually going to tell us if we had to bring in one of these empty cell values and make them basic variables instead of these. In other words, we're going to make them variables which are positive and non-zero. What their impact is going to be on the objective function. So remember when we did this, we looked at what this table represents. We said that our objective function is summing all of this with the multiplying of the cost coefficient. So we have the objective function we work it out is this here. And when we look at this table, we have, you know, x11 is equal to 30, x12 is equal to 10, 10, 15, 20, and 20. The rest of those are equal to zero at the moment. Now, this difference equation is going to calculate, like, if you make this x14 equal to 1, what's its impact going to be on increasing or decreasing this cost function total? 
So we have our dij is equal to our cij minus our rho i plus our kj. So in other words, all it's saying is the cost coefficient minus the row number minus the column number. So let's just rewrite this. And just a quick reminder that you can mix these up. So you could also work them out as, you know, kj minus ri. So we're going to work out the difference for all the empty cells, all the non-basic variables. So if we go ahead, we have 20 minus 0 minus minus 13 is going to give us 33. Then we have 20 minus 0 minus 3, that gives us 17. Then we have 30 minus 15, which is 15 minus 24, and that's minus 9. Then we have 24 minus 15 minus 24. So in my eyes, I'll go 24 minus 24 to give me 0 and then minus 15. And we've done our differences. Now the next thing in our modi method is to investigate those differences. So remember, I've said this now, that the differences that we're working out here is the impact of bringing in that variable from a non-basic variable, a variable that's equal to zero, to a positive value. So in this situation, positive non-zero value, technically it can be equal to zero, but we increase in it from zero. So we're like, okay, how's that gonna impact our objective function? The 33 means it's going to increase the objective function, so we don't really want to care about that because objective function and our objective is to minimize. So we don't care about the positive values. If all of them were positive, we would be at optimal. So then we need to look at, obviously, the negative ones because those are the ones that are going to further reduce objective function. If they're equal to zero, it means they're not going to, have it, um, not going to change the objective function by bringing them in, which means that there's just an alternative solution. Um, so we're not overly stressed about that at the moment. We more stressed about the situation where we're not at optimal and we know we're not at optimal because bringing in this one or this one is going to decrease our objective function solution. Now, obviously we want to do it as efficiently as possible, so we want to bring in the one that has the most impact. So the one that's going to reduce the objective function the most. So that's going to be the largest negative value. So we like, if we bring in this one, it is going to increase objective function value the most. So we have the little plus sign sitting over there. But now we have to consider, once again, the fact that when if we increase this, we are impacting this constraint and we're impacting this constraint. So remember, where the basic variables are kind of thing, those constraints are kind of like binding. So we have to consider, you know, what exactly is going on there. And if we change, if we increase this, you know, what's the impact going to be on it? So if we increase this, we have to decrease this one so that we maintain that 10. So it maintains like the binding kind of constraint. So we have, we need to decrease in this one to keep, you know, things working out correctly. And then we like, okay, we can either decrease this one, this one, or this one. We're not entirely sure which one. Okay, it's a little bit obvious when you look at it, but technically, we're not entirely sure here, but we're going to need to decrease it. But we do want to decrease it as a loop because we want to impact as little as possible of the constraints. So we like, we go now to this one here because it impacts our constraints as well. Because if we decrease this one, we are messing with this constraint here. And just a reminder, we can do it on this piece of paper basically, is we're saying, okay, we going to increase x22 right so we're going to increase x22 but remember it's binding so it's equality and then we have x11 so we have x112 plus x22 equal to 10 kind of a situation we want to try and maintain that so we go from there right so now we have obviously this row constraint also needs to be tweaked a bit to maintain it. That row constraint is turning over there. We suddenly decreasing that one. So we have to increase one of those, but we can only increase the ones that are actually have positive values. So, you know, in this situation, it is that one or that one. But if we increase that one, then we have, you know, another constraint that we have to tweak. So we try to make it as minimal as possible. So in that case, we have that minus 
minus kind of a situation occurring there and then we have a cool little loop occurring so we try to minimize the impact of the changes that we have to make otherwise we're going to wallow goose case kind of a situation and we can only change you know the basic variables in the situation so we can't change the non-basic variables in other words we can't change the empty cell values so we can only work with the ones that are have values in here not empty values okay so now we have we want to increase this one if we increase this one it's going to impact this you know constraint which means we have to decrease from this one you know to keep things all fair then we have a situation of if we decrease this one yes we have it sorted for that constraint but now we're impacting that constraint there so we have to again even it out balance it out so we're going to increase that one to balance it out then we like oh well we have that one you increase that one we have to decrease that one to balance it out and you can keep going around a loop to go through the explanations of that right so we have our loop but now we need to figure out what value can we put in here so we want the biggest value possible because it's having quite an impact you know on our objective function so we want it to be as large as possible while still maintaining the constraints so we know we can borrow from this 10 and we know we can borrow from this 15 or take from it and still keep our constraints being met but we know that if we take you know the full 15 we kind of screwed on this front here with the 10. so we technically have the smallest of the negatives to play with in regards to what we can take and still you know keep the constraints so before i do that i just want to actually write down the constraints again so you can see it so you have one two plus two two and let's just have that equal to 10 so you can see it like that and then we have you know the constraint here we have x one two i'm going to ignore that one there plus x two one sorry two two plus x two three plus x two four plus x two five and then you have your 55 kind of a situation technically it is less than equal to 55 you know if you're going across there and what you're doing now is this one you have 15 to play with this one you only have you know the 10 to play with so you can subtract here you could subtract 15 here you can only subtract 10 and it even makes sense when you do it like that kind of a situation because if you subtract more than that it's going to mess it up okay so to so just be very careful with that here you have your column constraint and then you have your row constraints and you want to you know maintain everything so you take the smallest negative so you have 10 now being added there you subtract the 10 there you add the 10 there and you subtract the 10 there to get your new tableau table or tableau whichever one you want to call it so our new tableau or table is you know that's zero so we don't write anything there then we have 10 20 actually 10 plus 10 is 20 we have 15 minus 10 and that is going to give us 5 that's going to be 10 and that's going to be 20 and that's going to be 20 and then we have a new tab table that we have to go through the exact same process with so just be very very careful about that and you know go through the, the entire process until all your differences are greater than zero there is another example in the videos which goes through till the very end